so I could unmute myself. So no. I just unmuted myself and then you muted me again. Is that yeah, keep me? keep yourself okay. muted. All right. Sorry.
All right, I'm not muted now. Can everybody hear me? Really? Okay, I'm not muted for the moment. Hopefully I'll stay not muted. Can you hear me? All right, I think we're good. Let me bring us over here. So, good morning, everybody. Um, welcome. Uh, I'm going to be chatting about my, about Make Code Arcade today, and uh, this stream is geared towards uh, both my students and the rest of the world. Uh, and I'm super excited to be able to, you know, kind of bring this out there and talk about some things I'm excited about. So. Over the next two weeks, I'll be streaming every day at this time at 9 a.m. Eastern and uh, on this channel and also at 2 p.m. Eastern or 11 a.m. Pacific on the twitch.tv slash esportsfed channel, which is uh, NACEF, and they're a great organization that's doing a lot with esports, but also trying to create an opportunity to build community over these couple of weeks when uh, millions of kids and parents and teachers are home from work. So uh, my goal, you know, so I teach game design and development. And the main idea here is that let's create some opportunities for kids, teachers to learn together, build community, and use some cool content creation tools. So over the next couple of weeks, we'll do things like today, we're doing make code, tomorrow will be uh, Minecraft, we'll do commands and command blocks. And what else are we going to be doing Wednesday? I'm going to have my guest uh, and good friend Clever Lake on with me to do some stuff with uh, Fortnite Creative Mode. Thursday, Stephen Reed's going to be joining us. I'm going to talk about potential for Minecraft and creating competitive uh, game environments in Minecraft and things like that. So we have a lot in store for you over the next couple of weeks. But today, we're starting with Make Code Arcade. So I'm going to go to Make Code Arcade. And you're welcome to do the same or, you know, just watch, listen, whatever works best for you. In a few minutes, we'll have opportunities also to share what you all mess around with and do through the Twitch stream. And I'm not paying a lot of attention to the oh, stream. I'm in so... if you want to make me a moderator. Okay. But I am going to, I think, make my wife a moderator along with... Uh, what's oh, Obi-Wan. Name? I wear the crown. What's my and name? new. I wear... Mrs. Sharp is here. Uh, yeah. Topher James is here. Yep. Are you the one with the, let's see, so you are now a moderator. I'm okay. not. Uh, you will be. Okay. All right. No. You should be. Um, so anyway, so this is this is Make Code Arcade. And basically, the thing that I like a lot about Make Code Arcade is, for one, we're creating retro style games. So it brings me back to my roots of the 80s. Um, but the environment is a block-based coding environment. And it allows you to create, you know, anything you can imagine, really. And it has an opportunity for you to create new projects. It also has all these great tutorials and community games and things. Um, what I usually start my students with, and many in, well, in my classes, uh, my seventh grade class, if anybody's here from it, will be doing this activity today. Uh, when you go to one of the tutorials, real simply, it's going to walk you through step by step. Now, these tutorials are wonderful. Uh, but I don't love the idea of just learning from a tutorial and saying, patting yourself on the back and saying, yay, I learned something. So my goal from a teaching standpoint is to always have kids modify their tutorial, you know, modify what they learned in the tutorial to kind of extend their learning, to experiment, to start to use the idea that they are starting to learn the syntax or the way that that this environment works and then extending it beyond what, what they've learned. So real simply, and actually, I, I would love to use uh, one of I Wear the Crowns' uh, great sprites. But when I get into the tutorial, it's telling me step by step what to do. So I'm going to create a new sprite. Now, a sprite, as it'll tell you in Make Code, is basically a character in the game or an object or what have you. Um, <clears throat> and I am going to come up to the editor here, and you can draw something that you'd like. I'm going to do a terrible job drawing something. Well, you can use drawing tools. I can use drawing tools, such as. So if as... you go over to the left side, uh -huh. uh, you have tools like circle tools, square tools, oh, right. line tools, so you don't have to worry about I don't about think that was always out. there. 
That's um, cool. You don't have to worry about dragging out a right. misshapen circle, but like for what circle, you have to start in the middle. Yeah, for the circle, you have to start in the middle. So let's try that. So we're going to make a nice, wonderfully, wonderful stick figure person here. It's going to be our main character. It's going to be very awesome. Okay, and our stick figure should have eyes, a nose, and perhaps a red mouth. And there we go. It's awesome, isn't it? Uh, maybe we should give him some arms. Let him smile. What? That's just like, right, indifferent. Now Kathy wants me to make him smile. All you have to do is like one thing up. There he's got a goofy smile. And we're going to then make some arms. It's like a T-Rex. It is like a T-Rex. Okay, there we go. Awesome. So now that's just a very simple, hopefully if you're playing at home, you're doing something also. I kind of like my character. Um, so then it tells me to go next and we are going to, oh, look, I already did that. I created the, the sprite. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the sprite move in the game. <clears throat> so controls, and I'm gonna move the sprite with the buttons. So really simply right now, what I did, if I go over here, this is the simulator, I can move around my character in my game, okay? So that's all great. So I followed directions, congratulations to me. Um, and now it brings us after that into a place where we could save it and publish it and all that great stuff. Now, if I wanted to, I can take this code and share it. Um, I could tweet it out right now. Let's do that, let's tweet it out, it's very good. Check out what I made with make code. I guess I have to log in here. Probably the wrong. There we go. Okay, so now it's on Twitter for all the world to, to see. Um, but now, like I said, with my students, what I would do, and I'm going to have you do this all in a moment, I hope, is expand, extend my learning. So what do we want to do? There are all these different things. Now, let me explain a little bit about how make code works. This is when I'm in a new project. When it's the tutorial, it'll only show me what I can use at that time. Once I've exited out of the tutorial, I have access to everything. So in the make code universe, they call things like this. They call these, we call these drawers. So in each drawer, these are all the items that I can work with on code from that drawer. Okay. So each of these gives us a lot of different things that we can use. So when we get to here, we start to think about things like, um, on game update, I could do things, you know, and whatnot. <clears throat> um, I, let's see, music, music is super cool. I can play a melody. Now, understand too, if I do this on start, it's going to happen at the beginning of the game and play however it's going to play. If I, let's see, if I go to loops and I decide forever, like let's say I decide what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a melody in the background of my song. I'm going to go in here. I have the opportunity to can you hear that? Isn't that lovely? That's beautiful. Okay. Sounds like a wedding song. Kathy says it sounds like a wedding song. So now it's going to play throughout my game over and over and be very annoying in this case. So I am going to stop that for a minute. So that's just a basic melody or whatever that I can put in. But just understand all of the different things that I could add. I could set the score. I could set, let's say we set a countdown. Okay. So now when I start my game, it's going to count down from nine to zero. And let's see what happens when it gets to zero. I'm winning. And so by default, at the end of a countdown, the game is over. So as you can imagine, the possibilities here are pretty tremendous for you to play around and, and continue going. I want to give everybody a little time because I'd like you to go to Make Code Arcade, um, either start that first tutorial or something. There we go. We're going to stop that countdown. Um, I'd love for you to go in and maybe try. I'll go back to where that is. If you go to Home and you go down, I like this one because it's under a section called Game Design Concepts. And as my students go through a lot of these, they're also learning elements of game design. So basically start with this walking hero 
And what I want you to do is, and I'm going to give everybody a few minutes for this, is um, is go ahead and do something and then drop your code, um, drop the link to your code right here in the chat and people can try each other's games. I'll, uh, I will try to do the same for my awesome game with my, let's see, I'm going to go back to, and then and the games, now understand too, your games only save currently on the computer you're on in the browser you're on as a cached file on that browser. So if you want to, later we'll get into a little more, but when you want to save a project, you can save it down here and it'll actually save it. This is so interesting to me. Um, it saves it as a PNG file. So it even says here, your project is saved in this image. Import or drag it into the editor to reload it. So it actually, for some reason, it embeds the code in an image. But if I bring it back in here, it's going to load it up again. Okay. You can also share that file or when you go to publish, this is the easiest way. Once you've saved or published a project, you have all these options. I can just copy this code and I could drop that right into the um, chat in this case and people could start trying each other's games. And there we go. Thank you, Obi-Wan, for all that. Um, <laughs> oh, Obi-Wan's a better moderator. Well, that's okay. You're all helping. And thank you for the moderators. Um, we're really trying to, to, to show that this kind of learning and experience can be very possible and, and you know, and, and um, safe as a safe environment for us all to spend time together, you know. Um, so it's really important to us that it's a family-friendly um, you know, school appropriate chat and all of that so that we can actually, you know, embrace the opportunities to communicate uh, and all of that stuff. I'd love to know if any of my either seventh graders or parents or eighth graders are watching. Well, there are 21 people watching right now. Yeah. You can see, I can check and see if you recognize any of the users. Mm -hmm. uh, 0 x 62 6 f or 74. No. <laughs> no. Alfred Judokas. Nope. No. Aiton, Crazy Crafter, Dinner Beef. Dinner Beef, Polis we know. Dinner Beef Polis is um one of the, well, I used to, well, one oh. of the, the Beast guys. Oh, awesome. Dinner Beef is one of my, my, uh, my biggest supporters. Oh, awesome. Is anybody, so are people. Oh, Dinner Beef. Is that, uh, all right. Well, Felizag, Matt J. L. 93, Mrs. Sharp, Rubber Slayer, Chernoff, Stellar MC, Topher, V and K. Chernoff, I think, is a student. Virgo Pros and Zach with a crazy number on him. Okay, cool. The Zach, that's seven, six, five, four, three, two. Yep. Okay, so Chernoff is one of the seventh graders. Hey, buddy. Um, so then it's saying, uh, it says 20, now it says 23, but it doesn't really update. That's, yeah. I, oh, there's some users private because this so, is about 23 let me ask you this folks while i'm taking a little break to let you do this um are people just give me a shout out in Andrew the chat here. yes <laughs> give me a shout out in the chat to tell me if you're actually in make code arcade trying it out on your own dinner beef is watching someone fail at parkour that's me that would be me usually dinner beef i'm failing in parkour i don't get it I think I Anybody see. working on actual? Um... Da -da -da. Maybe people are so busy working in Make Code Arcade that they're not responding to that. I we'll go back in is. and um, you know what I want to do again? Um, let's see. We'll go to um, one of the. Oh, and check this out. Actually, while you're doing, while you're working, I hope you're working. Let's see. Yes, Ms. Lee, teacher is working. Ms. Lee? Yep. Ms. Lee is in. <laughs> All right. Um, so if you look down here at what I'm looking at too, um, you can see that there are, there's all this hardware and stuff. So see this brain pad arcade. I have a couple of these in my classroom. And what they are, I didn't really care about that part, is they allow you to flash your Make Code Arcade game right to this device and play it right on there. Okay, and these are all different ones you can purchase to do that with, which I think is super cool. You can also, a lot of uh, 
teachers have been real creative creating like a, a raspberry pi and putting all of the arcade games in a in a in an area that they could play also um i've been using uh wakelet i'll show you that too to to show student projects but that's not Let's see if that, yeah, so you see here, I have a bunch of student created make code arcade mods and games here in this collection. And most of them in my case have students will create a blog post. Let's see if I can find one. Uh, let's see which ones were, I remember. Oh, this one's cool. We got Wario. So my kids, what they'll do is they'll write a blog post. So I have them talk about what learning took place, what challenges they've had, what they did to modify the code, the code, um, what uh, the definition in this case of a sprite was and stuff like that. And then in here, they can, oh, maybe this one doesn't have it embedded. I'll find one where it's embedded. You can embed the code right in the blog post. Let's see if this one's set up right. Yeah, so no. Yeah, so here it is. This is embedded right in the blog post. Maybe not. No, maybe that's just the picture. Right. I gotta find, oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, so this one has some narrative in it. And I won. So that's one of the real simple ones. Um, and there's so much more you can do. Let's go back to anybody uh, finish one that they could put a link in for. Okay, good. I'm glad you're working. That, that makes me happy. Oh, also check this out. There are three computer science introductory courses that use make code arcade, um, which is awesome. And let's check out some other cool stuff. So there's also the opportunity Everybody loves Flappy Bird or hates Flappy Bird. But here's an example where what they did was they provide you with all the code, right? So I I can play the game poor, poorly, I might say. And and I can make I can make changes to it. So let's say we decide that um set the gap to maybe random between zero and five. Let's just see what that does, okay? So that's gonna, I think, have something to do with where the different... See how it's... <laughs> oh my God, I'm as bad at this as I am at um, parkour. But see all the different things. So you could play around with making these changes. So that was when I made that from zero to five. Let's see if I make it from zero to one if we notice the difference. I'm not sure that I do. So set the top image and set the bottom image. And that has something to do with where this gap is. If the gap is equal to zero, then set it there. Oh, if it's equal to one, two, three. Oh, I see. So in this case, it was going to four. So we had to keep it at that. Or I mean, unless I changed other things too. All right. Let's see, anybody share an image yet? Hey, Ben. I think that's... Ben no, Kelly? no, I, I lied. I think Steam Cultivator, I was thinking, was Ben, but that's Stempathy. Ben Kelly? Yeah. So here's... Um, Dear Derenator. So as we go on, too, there's, there are games like Chase the Pizza. Let's play around with this one a little while y'all are working or for whoever's just watching. Um, so we're going to... This one, we're going to set the background as well. So I'm going to set the background color. Ah, flunk. <laughs> Hi, Mrs. Lee. Uh, uh, let's make our background color pink. And let's see. We're going to set our sprite. We're going to create a character. And this time, we're going to use some characters, I think, right from the gallery. So you can see what that's like. And we're going to click on that. 
and we're going to go to the gallery. I think this one we're going to use a slice of pizza. Isn't that a lovely retro slice of pizza? And we're going to hit OK. And we can also change things. Like I can change the name of this sprite to pizza. And I actually have different things we can, it can be for different purposes, a projectile, food, an enemy, et cetera. Um, I'll make the pizza food for a moment. Uh, da, 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 da. Well, actually, that, that's the, all right. So that's going to be the second one. The first one was going to be what? What was the first one going to be? Okay, they wanted us to draw an image. I'm not going to do that right now. So we're going to set the first sprite is going to be, let's see, this princess who's going to eat the pizza. Okay. And right now you'll notice they're both going to be on the same spot. You can't really tell because they're both right there. But I can change the position of the sprite, and we'll call her princess. And we're going to make the sprite of the princess whoops, start at down here in the corner. OK, now that should change that or not really. Why doesn't it look like that? Because I didn't change the name of this one to princess. Now watch. See that error was there? So now there's my princess. She's uh, she's she's up against a challenge to have to eat this very large piece of pizza. And then the pizza, so she's a player. That's going to be a food for now. We got our pizza. OK, we got our pizza. Now we're going to do something in a minute where <clears throat> on the Sprite overlaps other Sprite. OK, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go to Sprite, on Sprite of type. So we want it to be, now she's going to be type player, overlaps with other Sprite type food. Something's going to happen, OK? OK, so we're going to get score whenever we get the pizza. How's that? So we are going to start with the score should be under info. We're going to change the score by one each time we get a pizza. And then we have to also make the pizza move. But watch what happens right now, at least. I go and I, you'll see, it'll be interesting in a second. It's, oh, I didn't do the controls. So we want the controls for princess. And this is where it gets important, too, to remember what we call their variable. Because if I just say my sprite, it's going to give us an error again. But if I go to princess, and then we go in here. Now, notice my score keeps going up because I am still overlapping the pizza. So I'm going to get a high score very easily. I go off of it, now it's not scoring. So we have to do something about that. So the pizza or the princess has to move each time we do that. And now, this also brings up questions like, um, when it comes to game design, one of the things that I talk to my students a lot about is the importance of, of certain elements. Like, for one, ramp up difficulty. Like, a lot of these games, when you first do the tutorial, all they're going to do is have the same, um, you know, in other words, I'm going to get the pizza, it's going to move. I'm going to get it again, it's going to move. I'm going to get it again, it's going to move. We need to start factoring in, like, well, what if um, maybe when I score five points, the, um, the the time I have to get the pizza goes down or the, you know, the pizza moves in a different way or something to make it more challenging. So in this case, let's see what we're going to do by the tutorial and then we'll keep going on it. Okay, so they had us do it differently. They wanted to change. Oh, look at that. So they're using pick random. Oh, this is when it, okay. So this is when we collide with the pizza. We're going to set the sprite. position. Okay. So we're going to go back to pizza. So we're going to set the position of pizza to, and we're going to make this a random number. So now we're starting to get into using variables and things like that. Okay. So under math, I'm going to pick a random number between zero and something. Now, if this is my X, the X, this is the X um, coordinates. <laughs> And then the Y is going to go from here down. So it's like 0, 0, and then X increases, Y increases. OK, so if I go from 0 to 10, my pizza is going to end up, you'll see, let's try it. See, the pizza's now going to end 
somewhere between <laughs> between zero and 10 there. If I change this to let's say 100, now, whenever I get the pizza, it's gonna be from zero to 100. So this, I'm trying to think what the um, coordinates are right now. Let's see, actually we can figure it out. Maybe we can't. Okay, so X, let's see if we go to zero in a minute. Let's just change it maybe. It should, oh, I see why it's doing that. All right, but let's say uh, 800, okay? Now, so it really went away. So 800, so somewhere between zero and 800, 800 must be way over here. So let's change that to, let's say 400, let's see what happens. There's an easy way to figure out what the, yep. So it must be, I think it's just maybe 160, something. There's a way to figure, actually we can figure it out. So the, the Y goes, okay, so the X goes up to 160 and the Y, the Y goes down to 120. So if we do from zero to 160, and then we could actually duplicate this. Oh no, we don't need to. We're gonna duplicate this and put a random number from zero to 120. Now at this point, it can be anywhere on the screen because we're saying it can land anywhere within that. So now each time I get the pizza, it's gonna move. Right. Now, maybe one of the ways we address that issue with the, um, I mean, there are a couple things we could do. One is we could tell it, let's go to the end so we can have some freedom here. The arcade game screen, ah, 160 by 120, I should have read that far. Um, okay, and let's restart our countdown. So we're going to have a countdown each time. Uh, so we're gonna, when we start the game, we're going to have a countdown of, let's say, uh, 10 seconds. Actually, not each time. It should be. Well, it should be that. And I probably messed some things up here. Make this pink. Start countdown. Set princess. Um, and then set pizza. Okay. And now every time, now what we want to also do is, so we're starting with a countdown of 10, but each time that we, we want to reset the countdown. Okay. So we're going to now have this countdown in the game. So I have eight seconds and this is where we can get into the thing with the ramp of difficulty a little bit too, because I could change this countdown as I see fit. Okay. So as the score, maybe when the score gets up to 10, I change the countdown to something else, or maybe the countdown is even a variable, okay? So we can make a variable called count, okay? And this set count, maybe at the beginning, we wanna set it at 10, okay? and start count, let's see if this will work, um, not that. And let's say we take the variable count and we put it in here as set count to count. Um, nope, I lied. Start count down, count seconds. So now it should be 10, right? Now we can say something in here, like every time we get to a certain score, we increase or decrease the countdown. Does that make sense? So let's say we get out of this so we can see some other things. So as you start doing this, I'll, you know, I'll do, I'll paste this code in and you could start messing around with this code also, if you'd like, let's see if that works. I'm gonna find Twitch here, Twitch, Twitch, Twitch. Uh, channel. So here's the, if you want to play around with that, there's that. See if you could now make it so that the, when the score gets to five, the countdown gets shorter. So it's, you know, a little, uh, a little quicker. Okay. 
Let's see here. Yeah, micro bits are definitely cool. Oh, thank you, Mr. Washburn. All right. So are people, I'm gonna watch the chat for a minute to see if people start putting in some of their own code that they've done. Anybody come up with something yet? And in a minute, I'm going to talk about something super exciting. Dun, dun, dun. I've got Mike Washburn producing this show. Thank you very much. And thank you to uh, participate, uh, participate.com for, for supporting what I'm doing and for sponsoring this as well and for um, sort of co uh co-marketing it through the participate platform i definitely recommend people go to why are you chasing the pizza participate.com are you chasing the pizza or are you playing my chase the pizza i haven't well i had a chase the pizza but like you said because it's browser based uh, and in the cache it's just gone oh i lost i got a high score of two though hey steve i actually have a question good oh, please look, i'm i'm I can't i'm jump I, i'm jumping in oh, <laughs> please, please do please do um how easy is this for kids to just do on their own? Like if, if, a, if a kid just wanted to, if a kid was home, uh, you know, we have all of these children that aren't in school right now. How easy it is, is it for a parent to just get their child to go onto the make code website and then yeah. for them to just do it themselves, as opposed to a teacher well, kind of guiding them through it, how easy yeah. it would be for a student just to do it themselves. That's why I love what I've been showing you with, let's go back to the home thing here. If you're, I don't know if you want to show the screen a little bit, but the, the tutorials and everything are so great because they take you step by step. And, you know, that's why I love these, these game design ones. That first one I showed that walking hero, it literally is talks you through step by step, two lines of code to get it started. Um, the reason I always add in that piece of the modding is I want kids to create, you know, an experiment beyond that. Like, I feel like when they learn that simple part about, okay, here's how you create a sprite, here's how you make a sprite move, and then there are all these other things. Let me just try to mess around with them. And with block-based coding, when something doesn't work, just pull it back out of the code, get back to where it was working, and then try a little further to experiment. So absolutely can be done at home, you know, my students, just about everything they do is like, I'll say, I mean, the, 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 the guidance I give them is, okay, do this tutorial and modify it. Um, it's as simple as that. And then later in the process, we get into making our own full games from scratch. But I think that's what, that's what um, comes natural at that point. And that's what kids want to do. So absolutely. I think it's like, like, like a lot of things, such a, a low floor, high ceiling kind of, you know, environment. So if you were in a situation where you didn't, as a teacher, you didn't want to give your students like this, like hardcore regimented kind of, um, you know, you're not, ex what's a good example. So in Ontario, teachers aren't expected to teach during this time. They're, they're going to be off right. for the next three weeks and yep. they're not being told they have to teach. They're not being told they have to do anything. There are some schools and districts that where teachers do have to actually provide like lessons and like actual like mm -hmm. teaching but in ontario teachers don't have to do that at all but some teachers would like to like you know yeah. give their kids some things to do while they're oh. off some meaningful right. ways for them to learn this would be the type of thing where a teacher could put it in like their google classroom or whatever yeah. and say why don't you go to make code and just do this if you were if you were doing that as a teacher so what would you what would you suggest maybe so here's what's funny. Um, so Mrs. Sharp, who's in, uh, she's my colleague uh, at, at at my school, and we co well, we both teach the seventh grade cycle. Our assignment, like what we're doing in um, in our school, is we're we're supposed to come up with a fairly simple, reasonable, you know, assignment each day. Um, nothing that's probably going to be graded or whatnot but to keep kids active and doing things at home. We sure. chose this for just that reason. So each day in our Google Classroom, just like you're describing, I have, or we have them do one of these tutorials and modify it. 
you know, and the modifying part is going to be where the differentiation comes in. Some kids are going to go to town with it. Some kids are going to add a background and feel like, okay, you know, I did, I modified it. And then what they're doing is they're sending us the link every day as like their exit ticket. Um, it's intended to be because of the tutorial, you know, approach and everything. It's like that. Now for other teachers and the whole reason I'm doing, you know, kind of these streams each day is yeah. I feel like let's do, let's, create opportunities for kids to, to kind of see what's out there, what tools are out there that they can engage in and hopefully be excited about on their own. I mean, you know, a lot of kids will see this and if they have the opportunity, will hopefully just spend time because they want to, which is why I think it's a good thing that I can show to the world and don't have to say, this is just the assignment my class is doing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yes, <laughs> and Mrs. Sharp is right in the chat with us, which is awesome. So, uh-oh, we lost Mike. Mike Washburn's gone? Uh-oh. I don't know. I don't see him. He dropped out. No, this no. is the Steve Isaac stream, not the Mike Washburn stream. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe he had to go to the ER. <laughs> so, no, 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 but I like chatting with you, Mike. Um, so, here, let me show you something else that I'm super duper excited about. Uh, let me find it. And this is one of the reasons I was also wanted to talk specifically about this today, but let me see. Now I got to find my one of my 8 million other windows. Um, let's see, I'll find it. Um, wow. All right. I'm just looking at this. All right, so here we go, folks. Ready? What are we looking? Well, I'm, I'm going to show this. Hang on. So if I can find the right window now, I think, is this me? Nope. Ay, ay, ay. Well, this should be. Steam Cultivator, do you recommend starting with trying out some games to see how they work and then doing the tutorials and mods? Um, Steam Cultivator, uh, absolutely. I mean, have kids go in and, and play. I mean, what a great way to do this is to, that's why when you go back, I'll go back here for a second. Um, when you're in here, some of these, like these JavaScript games, these block games, these are existing games. Now, the nice thing about about make code is the code is always available, but we could go in and we could just open the example and play it. So if kids are interested, you know, just want to see what is possible, I absolutely recommend that. Um, in fact, that's like for those of you who use Game Star Mechanic at all, um, the Game Alley where students and, and whomever uh, publish their work is a great place to check things out. But here's here's like a simple uh, platform game that they created in Make Code Arcade. And why not just go in there, play it, get inspired. Hopefully don't, uh, let's see. Can I... Is that somebody's or is that, no. You uh, this I was is gonna one say, did you do it? No, you didn't do that one. No, this is one that's in there, but oh boy. Can we make that jump? I oh, think though that some jump. people might worry that, um, you know, if you introduce the games, like the playing first, that sometimes, well, I mean, sometimes when there's playing, is there so much doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the question there, too, that uh, Kathy brought up is, you know, sometimes, though, if there's so much playing, then do the kids move on to doing? And, it, you know, I guess you could look at it both ways. If I were to be guiding the student in some way, I might have them play the game for a bit, but then also let them know when they're supposed to go back to actually working on it. So Mrs. Lee teacher, Ms. Lee teacher, can students save their projects on OneDrive? My district has well, Office 365. Did you do the yeah. saving yet? No, no, no. But so here, let me show you that too then. That's a great question. Oh, wait, before that, this is what I wanted to show everybody. Right now, MakeCode is starting, um, it started today, a- uh, oh, yeah, that's right, the game jam. A game jam. And they actually extended it to make it for two weeks um, because of the fact that kids are home for an extended period of time and stuff. But um, basically, the the goal of this, and my students, I'm posing this as an absolute option, is to create a game that takes place in one room and, you know, think of, you know, like, play around with these tutorials, learn, 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 and then dive into creating, as something comes to you, create your own game. Um, I have one student, I don't know if he's in the stream right now, but he created uh, a Pong type game with two birds where you're playing against somebody else in Pong and he's thinking, well, that satisfies the criteria. So what can he do to expand upon that? You know, we were talking about what if you possibly made, 
you know, it be have a one player option where you're playing against the computer and you had to program one of the birds to play on its own, things like that. So there's a lot of potential here, a lot of ideas for like an escape room type thing. My kids do a lot with like mazes in make code. You can do a full on adventure game. Uh, the interesting thing about this one is it has to take place in one. Right, but not one room. panel, right? Because I was thinking about that too. If you did if you did a room, you could still have four yeah. panels or four scenes like for um, each wall of the room, right? You can have it extend beyond, yeah. meaning you can have it be a maze that right. the camera follows you yeah, yeah. to the next mm -hmm. room. That you can do, but right. it can't be completely separate like levels or rooms. Oh no, I meant like if you're looking like if you're in the room and one side of the room is this wall and then you turn and somehow I don't know, you yeah. program in the turning. Uh yep. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Um and then it even says here, let's see, make code brings programming to life for students of all ages, create fun projects, get immediate feedback, code using either drag and drop. Oh, and also the text-based coding we didn't even talk about, and I don't want to complicate things too much, but what's super cool is that there is this tab for JavaScript. So if you want to transition to text-based coding, you can do all the coding in JavaScript or still work with the blocks, which is nice. Um, and then I would translate back and forth. I would suggest um, just for beginners to start with the block. Yeah, absolutely. To kind of stick with the block because even when even even when you think, oh, I'm I have my cursor in the right place with the JavaScript, whatever the the snippets will show up where they want to show up, and and I think yeah, it's uh, makes more sense. Yeah. Uh, to do the block. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Kathy's it's a good saying, transition to analyze and stuff, but if you're just right. starting out. I wouldn't start. No, 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 definitely not. I would agree. Uh, start out with the block-based coding. It's very intuitive, very easy to understand and things. But now back to um, what Ms. Lee teacher was asking. So let's say we go back to my walking hero game over here. If I want to save this, I can, again, so I can save it. And what I had pointed out before is it saves it as this interesting PNG file. You can absolutely Set, you know, um, put this file in OneDrive, put it in Google Drive, email it, collect them all in a folder, collect them all in um, in uh, Wakelet. You know, so there's so many ways. Um, it's going to be a live dance party today at 5 o'clock. A live dance party? Yeah. It's on the Learning at Home community by Mike Washburn. Mike Washburn, there's going to be a live dance party today at 5 o'clock. Um, so then there's that. And then when you go to publish it, you get the um, you get the link here, and what I really love too is and this is what my kids have been doing. Is if you go to this to embed and the simulator, this code here, um, my students when they create a blog post, they embed that code in the blog post, and that's how you can play their game right on their blog. So without them needing to just say, "Oh, go here to play my game," the game is actually embedded right in the blog post, and. Let's definitely open up to other questions um, because really, you know, a, a lot of it, even like Mike said, is about you going in there and playing around. Um, has anybody posted any examples of things they've tried yeah, so they far? Yeah, I think people are still working. Are people working? I hope you are. I mean, I added a character So to I my... see somebody the night was going to post their game, but I don't see the link. Give me a quick shout out if you're actually working in Make Code Arcade playing around right now. And if so, are you working on the Walking Hero tutorial or something else? It's just me. <laughs> I Wear the Crowns is working on. So I Wear the Crowns, and, and this happens with a lot of my students too, is once they find the image editor, they realize how much fun they have and how much they really like creating the sprites. So. Uh, my lovely wife has created Hello Kitty sprites and basically every Sanrio character, as Not you saw earlier. Here. Where is that? I need that. Wait, like, well, um, I'll show you. I got another one. Okay, wait. We're going to get another one in a second from her. Mrs. Okay. Sharp did yesterday. She did yesterday? What did she do yesterday? Well, that's what you should be doing, Steam Cultivator. That's awesome. Oh, here we go. So look at I Wear the Crowns. It's 
I added another character. All right, let me see if I can. And then it. what I did was um, I made the greeting a function so mm -hmm. that I can call the function. But, okay. Oh, so you know where it's used to say. Wait, why don't I show this okay. on here? Um, let's see. It's hey. not a game. It's not a game. It's a message. Board. That's fine too. Um, so here's the latest and greatest from I Wear the Crown. It's so, the same though. It's just a mod of what was there. Before. Okay. Oh, look at that character though. Hey, Who's hey, that? That's my melody. Oh my goodness. So this this message in the middle, it's the same message, uh -huh. but earlier I had it as part of the on start, uh -huh. and now it's a um, it's a function called greeting, right? So I can call mm. the function when I need it. And I could take out that block um, when I don't. Take so, it out right? from the call. So waiting. I could take it out from on start. Yep. Right. Oh, awesome. I and, see. And the say hello is also, um, say hello is a function oh, wow. as well. So see that? So I mean, we're getting into, let's be really clear here too, that the possibilities for all areas, you know, all coding concepts is here. Um, like. I Wear the Crowns here used this repeat a thousand times because she wanted, I had asked her to have this so that it stayed up here and kept saying hello. Um, and so she had it originally not necessarily doing that and then added this repeat. So now it just does it essentially almost forever. She would have done it forever except she wanted it in a function and the forever loop is freestanding, right? Mm -hmm. um, but so these are functions which you'd see in programming. Here's a great example of a loop. Um, you could use conditional statements and all of these things you'll learn as you go on. No, this is just us. <laughs> Any questions? Oh, I lost it again. Oh, here it is. Wait, we'll see you later. Right? Yeah, absolutely with the sprites. And then, you know, the game design, one of the things I love about teaching game design is that there are so many different roles in the game design industry. So oftentimes what you'll find is, and, and I've, <laughs> I've had a blast with my students once they find this image editor as well. Some of them just really love creating pixel art. And then on a design team, we now all of a sudden have a graphic artist that can contribute to the team. And, and you know, likewise, you know, sound engineering is an important part of game design. We've had kids create the music for other people's games. Um, you know, tomorrow I'm doing a stream on commands and command blocks in Minecraft. So we'll be talking about how you can automate, um, you know, things within Minecraft in order to create games in that environment and stuff. So, so much great stuff. And I would love it if a lot of you do participate in the one room uh, game jam this week and next. When is the stream? Which one for, for Minecraft night? So every day at 9 a.m. I'm going to be doing uh, a live stream like this one. Tomorrow will be commands and command blocks in, in Minecraft. Wednesday will be getting started with Fortnite Creative. Thursday is going to be something with Stephen Reed on um, Minecraft and I believe something with a competitive, like creating competitive game environments or something like that. I have to talk a little further with him about that. Um, I'm planning on one day doing something with um, with CoSpaces EDU to create like, you know, environments that could be used for VR. Um, Adam Clark, uh, the common people, if you know him or, 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 uh, Wizard, wizard, wizard. Wizard Keen. Wizard Keen. <laughs> He's going to be joining us one day. Um, and Mark Suter is going to be joining us one day to do stuff with Unity and all sorts of things. So we have a lot of neat stuff planned. And then the stream will also happen every day at 2 p.m. Eastern or 11 a.m. Pacific um, on the Twitch, on the Esports Fed or NACEF Twitch. So that one's twitch.tv slash Esports Fed. I'll write that in the chat. Lurks, do you know Lurks? The Lobby, Crazy Cynical, Commander Root, Aiden, Aiden Evolves is here. Yeah, and do, uh, 
you know, encourage others to join us. Uh, the streams will also be available through the Twitch channel. Um, I believe they stay up for about maybe 30 days. And um, I believe I'll also be exporting them to my class YouTube channel. Commander Root is a bot. Okay. We also have some more other interactive stuff we're going to try to plan um, where, you know, people will be able to uh, oh, he's back. Know, jump in and play and stuff. Who was Mike? Mike Washburn. And then well, also he flashed check out. in and then he flashed out. I clicked on it by accident, I'll be honest. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, exci I'm, because I'm excited to play Minecraft maybe with you tomorrow. Okay, absolutely. Yeah, let's we do could, it. I was thinking we could build, we could even, if you wanted to do build that sphere that we built uh, yeah, last we, week. We, we, we end with that. That'll be our, that'll be the closer. Oh, I have, boy. We have more. We have more spheres. We have an escape room in there now. One of my students created an escape room mini game. Yeah. Um, we'll show that off tomorrow. Uh, what else? We'll show our little rail system that takes us from sphere to sphere. Sphere right. to sphere. Yeah. Uh, Did that get know, finished? Well, I mean, finished for what we have. Like, so I think we have about four or so spheres that are all um, connected. I, they're not probably not all connected yet. That We'll get to that. We'll get students in there to do that. Yeah. And then uh, Fortnite on Wednesday. Fortnite Wednesday. Yep, yep, yep. And then more Minecraft, I think, on Thursday and... Who knows what Friday will bring yet? I got to plan that, but uh, it's exciting. I mean, it's really fun stuff, and let's just uh, learn together and and uh, make the time worthwhile. Thanks to everybody who's retweeting and and sharing on Twitter. There's lots of lots of tweets, lots of tweets, lots of sharing, lots of people sharing the links uh, to the to the stream and to the learning at home community on participate. So there's lots going on there. Oh, cool! And do do ask questions and and um, you know. I, like that, yeah, that learn at home community on participate can certainly be the hub for discussion boards and things around this. In fact, maybe we make a discussion in there where we can take questions. Oh, let's see. Oh, there it is. Wow, it came from, it says it came from Mr. Isaacs. That's, that's fancy. It's magic. Let's see. It's magic. Look at that. Go participate.com slash learning at home. I, you know, I mean, you know, I am, it, the, the reason we're all, together is unfortunate but the potential that i think we have to push things forward with education and online learning and community um are pretty great so i want to embrace that part and be super excited about what we can do um and i hope that it does bring people together and we find our affinity spaces you know online and and continue learning and you know take healthy breaks from the computer and, you know, uh, play some tabletop games with the family and, and take a walk and all sorts of stuff. But, uh, you know, I think, um, in terms of what we can do together, I think we can really make the best of this. I like this, uh, this comment here. Ah, oh, is that Mike putting those things on? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Healthy breaks. Definitely. I have magical powers. <laughs> what are my taco chip? My Dorito chip. <laughs> Your taco chips? No, I'm just, I made, I put a little taco Dorito chip in the chat. Which I you did? It's kind of funny. Well, because they're those little things. Well, I don't yeah. use Twitch that much, so. Magic powers are cool. And Mike yeah. has them. I do. <laughs> I do. So we are still here for, you know, definitely happy to be here for the, few more minutes uh any questions I, i'd love to field them uh, i liked what mike was asking before about is this something that people can do you know there's the whole idea about all of this stuff i hope is is you know providing opportunities for what you can do um and learn on your own i'm all about you know learning you know i love learning <laughs> and you know when you find a resource like Make Code Arcade. And actually, let me go back even a step further then. Um, so while we're talking about Make Code, and we'll probably do a session one day on Make Code and Minecraft, but Make Code is this programming environment, but it interacts with a lot of different um, platforms and physical devices. So if you look at what I'm showing now, 
micro bit people have talked about before. I think it's about, what is the micro bit? About $10, $15, $15. And you can do all sorts of um, physical computing with that, with the LEDs and things, really cool stuff. A lot of people make a lot of neat wearable type things with the micro bit. Circuit playground is, is interesting and neat and just sort of, I guess, uh, like their cousin, their cousins. Cousins. <laughs> expands sort of upon what you can do just in some neat ways. And then Minecraft, you could totally program um, with make code in Minecraft. And one of the things they just added, which I'm ridiculously excited about, is that um, you can uh, code in block based code or JavaScript. And they just added Python. Oh, and listen to this too. Here's the other cool thing about it, which I hadn't considered. Yeah. So it's, it's, um, browser based, right? And you need the program. I mean, you need the game in order to run the code. Mm -hmm. But somebody brought up at this, uh, at the KISD last week that you could have kids, if it's browser based, Whoa. so you could have kids write code in a browser on a Chromebook and then export the code and bring it into the one machine that oh, wow. has the game in it. So I guess the only thing is there's no simulator. There's though. no simulator, right? So you can still build code right, right, right. in all the different ways, blocks, JavaScript, or the Python, uh -huh. save it either by the share or by download, and then and bring that code yeah. over to a computer that does it right. or a device. Which is so great. it could be iPad or it could be yeah. the computer. The only challenge though is like right. with coding, you want to it. test it all test the time. It. Right. Yeah. So it's like if you had, I don't know, if you were like leading the assignment and saying, okay, everybody do this. And now I don't know, make a change or explore what this does, or you could do it like a lot of times. Um, you know, you should be looking at code and trying to figure out what it's doing. So I think it would be a great exercise mm. in that. Kind of forces you. Yeah, to forces you to analyze harder. what's yeah. going on with the code, yeah. right? In Which other words, like, I like. like here's some code. So I'm guessing a lot of you can figure out what this code would do in Minecraft. Right, even if you went in here and you made all the chat commands Thanks, ahead of time. What's that? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So these are like, so these chat commands are like, kind of like functions that you're going to do in Minecraft where if I type in the word survival, it'll change the game mode to survival for, for the nearest player, which is similar to what I'll be doing tomorrow where I'll just talk about game mode survival, you know, at P and things like that. So anything you can do in Minecraft, you can do with make code, which I think is pretty as Mike would say, rad. Rad. That's, is that what they say in Canada? Yeah. So, I don't, eh, I what Mike said. Eh. I'm bringing no, it Mike back. Mike says rad. Mike <laughs> says rad. I can um, I can do a. I can make a cube of. Rad, uh, here I'll do a fill. <clears throat> this right here would make a twenty by twenty by twenty cube hollow cube of uh, stone blocks in Minecraft, which is super cool. What are you suggesting for students if they have limited internet device access? Great many, question. Many students will have siblings. Oh, look, Mike just <laughs> that too. Yeah, so that's happening. I mean, that is a definite absolute. So parents from home will definitely claim be claiming the best device. Ah, right, right. <laughs> the parents working from home. Well, kids, first of all, remind your parents that the things that you're doing on the computer probably take more uh, more of the computer resources than the uh, Excel spreadsheet and whatnot that maybe your parents are doing. Um, so we'll try to we'll try to advocate for you on that. But uh, the Great question. So we have a lot of that in our school that we've already talked about. So where I have, you know, a class schedule at school, you know, that's based on times of the day, we're scrapping that completely. So it's not like, like I'm available and my kids can do their work that I assign or whatever at any point during the day. But we have to be cognizant that there are often four siblings at home sharing a device. Um, you know, the nice thing about this stream, I hope, is that while the one kid's on a computer and the other can can watch on their phone, maybe they can, you know, engage in what we're doing, um, even if they're not on the device at that time. Um, and actually, this make code is pretty cool because you actually can work on a phone, on a tablet or whatnot. Um, even when we talk about Fortnite Creative on Wednesday, that works on so many different devices. So I think it is important to think about that. I think it's important to understand that we don't expect kids, each kid to be in front of the computer all day as if they're, 
learning online in that way. Um, so that that just is a, an absolute reality. So thanks for raising that question because I think it is something that we have to all be very aware of. Um, and then there are families who might not have a device. There are families who, yeah, you know, I mean, gosh, so many situations. Um, our district, I, I heard the other day, and I was so glad to hear this, um, that our IT director was actually out in the community installing hotspots in certain families' homes so that they could get online. Um, you know, I mean, that's pretty great. Uh, there were towns where the number you would have to do would be, you know, outrageous and probably not nearly as feasible as in the town where I teach and stuff, but things like that are happening. I think that's yeah. probably a, a good place to, to end too. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thanks everybody. This was great. Um, I hope it was great for you. Um, I'm excited about, you know, spending time with everybody every day. And I thank Mike for, uh, <laughs> for being my uh, awesome producer here and everybody who's been helping moderate and participating. And please go into that um, community and participate. And, you know, it would make me really happy to see people drop their code in there or on Twitter or wherever you can reach me so I can see the cool stuff that you've been doing with Make Code. And especially if you enter that contest, uh, the game jam as well. Thanks. There's a, there's a really cool discussion on that participate community on screen time. And that would be a great, this, that discussion would be a great place to drop your code, your ideas for make code, uh, stuff like that. Cool. Thanks Mike. Thanks everybody. We'll be, I'll be back at two o'clock doing pretty much the same thing on twitch.tv slash esports fed.